Hi ladies and gentlemen, today is June 10th, 2014 and you know after the last video uh, I know that was pretty intense and I do a lot of spiritual things uh, along with my commentary on politics and all that's happening in the world, military things, all that but I, I was laying in bed this morning and uh, I got to thinking, man you know I, I got to think of some numbers here. I'm, I'm doing some math in my head. I'm not a mathematician. I have a daughter who is. But, you know, I got to thinking, I wonder. So here's the story. You know, Abraham, uh, he sees God and these two angels coming to him. And they discuss several things, but one of which is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham says, look, uh, God, and this negotiation process is really interesting because it shows how God respected Abraham. And Abraham says, look, if, if there are 40 people there, will you spare them? Will you spare Sodom and Gomorrah? And God says, yeah, I'll do that. And Abraham says, well, peradventure there are only 30 there. Would you, would you spare it for 30 people? And God says, sure, I'll do that for you. And Abraham says, look, don't get angry at me here, but I, I want to go a little further. What if there are only 20 people there? Will you still save it for 20? And God says, sure, I'll do that. Then finally, Abraham, he crawls up on his hands and knees, begging God not to get upset with him. He says, finally, if you find 10 people there, will you not destroy it? And God says, for you, Abraham, I won't destroy it for 10's sake. Well, of course, he did end up destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Only a lot of his family were saved. And even Lot's wife got in trouble for looking back. But I was sitting there thinking this morning, well, 10 people, I wonder what the percentage is. So this is, I, 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 I worked all this out, and this is the, the text I sent out to my friends this morning. Abraham negotiated with God to save Sodom and Gomorrah if God found 10 righteous people there. I do not know what the census was, but let's say 30,000. A possible number for such a place in those days. 10 out of 30,000 is 0. .0003. Using that against the roughly 300 million plus in the US to find the equivalent in the United States gives a round off figure of 100,000. If God allows the total destruction of the US it will mean he cannot find 100,000 good people, will he? Now, what about the world population of 7 billion? The same factor would mean he would need to find 2,100,000 good people, will he? Finally, back to the U.S., let's allow that 10 in Sodom and Gomorrah was to be out of a population of only 3,000. God would have to find roughly 1 million good people in the U.S. to convince him not to destroy it. Again, I ask, will he? So that was, that's what was going through my mind this morning. And what it comes down to, folks, is this. We have evil at the top of this government, okay? They're lawless. The, the, the undeclared wars, the unjust wars. You know, Obama can't even technically be the commander-in-chief unless Congress declares war. Calling him the commander-in-chief otherwise is, 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 is wrong. It, it's not to be the case on the Constitution. We see the Constitution being attacked all across the board the Bill of Rights, all of these things. The aggressive wars, as I've mentioned. We look at, at how he's released criminal immigrants, people who have come here, illegal immigrants who have come here, committed crimes from murder to assault to theft, and they've been released out on the street, thousands of them. We see him, the way he, he disregards our immigration laws, period, and he's allowing people to come here in droves. They're dropping off plane loads of people in Texas and Arizona and allowing truckloads and hundreds and possibly thousands across the border. You and I can't even get a driver's license without proving that we're Americans. You and I can't leave the country, go across the border in Mexico or Canada and get back without a passport. And yet we're allowing people, we don't know who these people are, coming across the border talk about you know a way to get across to be to, to be terrorists real terrorists not not people standing up for the Constitution that the government declares terrorists got some information the other day about possible Russian spetsnaz coming across the Canadian border I don't know okay I, I have some pretty good intelligence sources and you know they're probably getting ready for this all right so anybody can come across across the Mexican border as well 
the lawlessness of the president with, in regards to the releasing of the five Taliban for this deserter. He may have been an intelligence asset, I don't know, but releasing five Taliban. Now, if those guys were really bad dudes and people lost their lives getting those guys, if they're really bad, I, I have questions about Gitmo. I think you know that. I don't consider that to be a good thing. But if these guys were really five bad dudes to release them back to do harm to people around the world, especially Americans, that's lawless, that's disrespectful, that's criminal, that's evil. Either Obama's insane <laughs> or he's evil. Frankly, I think it's both. And he works for very evil people. They're all evil to the core, and they're proving it every day. Now, what does this come down to? Finding ten people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Finding a million here in the United States. Can we find 100,000 to a million, depending upon you know what we need here, as far as the proportions are concerned? You know, folks, if we don't stand up for what's right, cause and effect. If you don't believe in God, it's going to be cause and effect. If you do believe in God, then that's the issue, okay? We're going to go down because of the evil that we're allowing this government to do. When the evil rule the people mourn, they're going to be destroyed because they're allowing this to happen. Please, you got to stand up. you got to stop you know, watching these silly sitcoms and believing the stuff the mainstream media throws at you. They're just the propaganda arm of the state. You know, the Bundy thing is a good example. You know, Sean Hannity, Fox News, and it's supposed to be reliable, right? Sean Hannity, he's in the business, Glenn Beck, in the business. They should know that these sources of information that they drew this supposedly racist comment by Bundy out, which of course wasn't if you listen to the entire speech, was not what they said it was, and yet they even propagated that disinformation. Evil people, evil people. Now with the shooting in Las Vegas, you know, Anytime you have a large group of people, you're going to get all kinds. That's one reason why I was out in the hills. That's why I was watching the the, the people. You know, I wasn't just looking for you know DHS or 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 uh, BLM. I was worried about the people that were there. I was out talking to people, especially in the periphery where they could do some damage out there if we didn't know they were there. I spent a lot of time out there checking up on people and making sure they're okay, and then looking for those possible wackos, criminals out there. Sure, I was. These guys that committed this shooting in Las Vegas, killing the two police officers and that one uh, uh, concealed weapon permit holder, uh, does the fact that they lived in Las Vegas mean that everybody in Las Vegas is bad or have bad intentions? Of course not. But you see how the media twisted that to make it look like, well, because they were with the Bundys, that taints all the Bundys. Well, of course it doesn't. What they did was hideous and heinous. You know, as, as Ammon Bundy said, you know, our beef isn't with the sheriff's office. Our beef is with the BLM, and that's true. They didn't have a problem with the other than the sheriff not responding to protect them. And then Ammon said something else. You know, the tyranny and anarchy are both bad, but anarchy is probably worse. Why? Well, that's obvious. You know, you have people running around doing this kind of stuff, and it's not good. So, as much as I know that police have been influenced by the DHS and the federal government to become militarized and to disrespect people, you know, the police officers in and of themselves. You know, most of the time they're getting bad people. They are, okay? And so what happened there was tragic. These guys could have been provocateurs. They could have been mind control, or they could have just been criminals. I don't know. But either way, to, to, to do what the Secretary of the Interior did and the mainstream media to try to make it look like that's the Bundy situation, that's wrong. But that shows you how evil this government is, that it doesn't want you to try to fix it, to try to make the government accountable. And we're going to pay the price if we don't start doing that. A lot of people want to know about the Bergdahl situation. Okay, well, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, I've already talked about that. Uh, again, that's a lawless thing on the on the on the on the president, and and I don't know who else was responsible. They're trying to push it over on Hegel now. But the fact of the matter is, is that this president thinks that whatever he does is legal. He believes he is the king of this land, and that's not true, and that's why we did this thing up on Ensign Peak. So whether good people, powerful good people, can come and make this land safe for those who want to get away from the craziness that's going on in this Babylon, this 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 evil, evil country, especially with what's coming out of D.C. Whether it's that or whether God himself will, will intervene, of course, we're hoping God himself will intervene, but he usually uses good people to do that. So we'll see how this plays out. At any rate, cause and effect, we need to stand up. And I know I've already said that a couple times, but, you know, back in the Army, they taught me to tell you what you're going to tell your students, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. <laughs> so that's why I do a lot of this. 
Well, anyway, on a lighter note, I'm wearing my Sturgis cap and my, my Sturgis shirt so that you can see that I'm really not a prude, okay? Uh, yeah, the right use of things is what's important, and, and sometimes our concept of, of sin and wrongdoing isn't really what, what it is. I believe in having a good time and enjoying people. Um, and, and so after I sent this, this text out this morning, this is where we're going to end on a little lighter note here. Uh, I thought, you know, people really need to know I'm not a prude. I, I, I'm, I'm not self-righteous. Uh, I'm really not. And so I sent this out to my friends, and I'm, I'm giving it to you too, okay? Take it for what it's worth. I said, lest anyone think me self-righteous or a prude, I like beer, heterosexual sex, and an occasional four-letter expletive. All right? Have a great day.